Volume check 2-1, let's put run TP on a Synology NAS, and run TP is awesome. It, it's going to put me out of business, because you can basically one-click install a lot of different apps. If you know what Casa OS is, it's kind of similar. It's a little similar. I think you can make comparisons. So to start this off, you need to make sure that you have Virtual Machine Manager on your Synology NAS. If you don't have it, just head to the Package Center, type in Virtual Machine Manager, and it should show up. If it's not showing up, that means it's not available on your model of Synology NAS, and you're probably not gonna be able to do this. But you could search around. There is a chance if you've got an Intel-based, like an older Intel-based Synology, maybe you can get it on here if it's not showing up, but it should show up if it's supported. I'm going to click out of here. So the virtual machine that we're going to install, because I want to make this kind of quick, we're going to do Alpine Linux. So just Google search Alpine Linux, <clears throat> head over to their site, click on Download, and then we're going to look for, there's a section called Virtual, and we want x86 underscore 64. I checked over a lot of the Synology NAS um, CPUs, and it seems like if it's going to run... If it's going to be able to run Virtual Manager, this is the version that you're going to that you're going to need. X86 underscore 64. So if we go back to our NAS, we're going to pop open Virtual Machine Manager. Image. Sorry. So we'll go to Image, and then we'll click Add. Let's do From Computer, and then double click the image that you downloaded. So I'm going to click Next. Oh, no. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to rename this. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to rename this because I already have it installed, and I just want to show you how to do this. So if you click Next... You should be able to select your volume. I only have one volume, so that's going to be it. And then you can check use selected storage as default if you want. If you're going to make future virtual machines out of this, that might be useful. But maybe not. Maybe you want to use something else to default. I don't know. No wrong answers there. I'm just going to click out of here. So it'll now show up in this list of ISOs. So these are just different, different operating systems you can install as virtual machines. So hopefully, you probably only have one. I've, I've got a couple on here because I like to mess around. So let's click on Virtual Machine, and let's set up this first virtual machine that's going to host Run TP. So we're going to click Create, and then we're going to click Linux Next, Select Storage. I'm going to click the only volume that I have on my machine, and I'm going to name this Run TP VM. I did not spell that right. Run to pip, Run TP. I probably could just type in TP VM because I think it just shows up as TP when you're in there. I think they did run TP so you could actually search and find it. Under CPUs, I'm just going to use one for now. You can always increase that later. And the same for memory. Um, I'll, I'll bump this up to 2 gigabytes. But you can actually run this as low as, you could type in 512 and it'll run. Depending on how many resources you have. But it's nice to dedicate a little more RAM if possible. So I'm going to dedicate 2 gigs of RAM. This is all fine. I'll click next. And then for virtual disk, I'm going to set this to 40 gigabytes. You can set this to whatever you want, but just bear in mind that this is going to take space from your Synology NAS. When you're making a virtual machine, I believe, I believe, I don't know because I'm no expert, but I believe you can expand your storage. I know that you can do that. You can expand your storage on a virtual machine, but it is more difficult to shrink. It might even be impossible. So it's probably better to start off with a lower amount of space and then expand it later on, as opposed to throwing a terabyte in here and then realizing that that's going to be Difficult, if not impossible, for you to shrink if you ever need that space back. So let's click Next. Default network is fine. I'll click Next. And then for ISO file for boot up, I'm going to click the Alpine Vert image that we downloaded. And then everything else should be good. You can also set this to auto start. I'm not going to do that now. You can do that later. But if you're actually going to use this a lot, it's not a bad idea to just say, hey, every time my Synology NAS pops on, go ahead and start this virtual machine. Otherwise, I believe when you turn off your NAS or your virtual machine, it will not reboot. So you will just have to do it manually. But otherwise, this is all good. So I'm going to click Next. And then you can allow users to turn on and off and mess with the virtual machine. So I'm not going to do anything because I only need an administrator account to do that. But if you want one of your regular users to be able to mess with it, that option is there. And then Power, I'm going to check Power on the virtual machine after its creation and make sure this all looks good. Sure. And then Done. So now it's going to load up the virtual machine. You can see I've got TPVM here creating. And Alpine Linux, if you don't know what it is, it's an operating system that it's got a real, it's got real low overhead. There's not a lot in there. Actually, a lot of Docker containers will use Alpine Linux to run their services. All right, I've got my virtual machine running. So the way that we're going to get into the virtual machi machine, not machine, machine, we're going to click connect. All right, and we are in here. So the first thing that it says, once everything is loaded up, is localhost login. That's actually just asking for a username. And by default, if you're using Alpine Linux, your username will be root, R-O-O-T. Like root, but without all the G. 
So it actually gives you instructions on how to set this up. We do need to set up the virtual machine before we can install RunTP. And it's got all the instructions here. So I'm following the guide here that is on their URL for wiki.alpinelinux.org. So if you want to follow along, and especially if you're watching this video in the future when Alpine Linux might be more, up to, more updated, you can always refer to that guide in case I say something that sounds really stupid because it's no longer useful. So I'm going to type in setup dash Alpine. Can you see that? You can't see that. Let me scoot this up. Here you go. Okay, you couldn't, you couldn't see any of that. That's weird. All right, set up Alpine. Then I'll hit enter. So anything in brackets is that's what it's going to use if you just hit enter. In this case, for key map, I'm going to type in US, and then I'm going to type in US again for the keyboard layout. Host name, I'm going to type in TP. No, not TPIP, TP. And then I'm going to just type in enter because I want it to use ETH0 for my Ethernet. IP address, I am just going to hit enter and let DHCP give it a random give it a random IP address. Do you want to do any manual network configuration? I absolutely do not want to do that. So I'll hit no. I do, but I don't want to, I don't want to spend the time doing it. So you can see my virtual machine now has the IP address 192.168.86.29. You probably have a different one. And then changing the password for root. So let's just get a password for root. Count the clicks, you might be able to guess that password that I used there. All right, time zone, I'm gonna type in America, and then I'm in the New York. Oh no, you can, look, they gave you the big list. I'm gonna do Louisville. I'm gonna do Louisville, greatest city in the uh, greatest city in the world. And then I will just hit enter for none. I will hit enter for one. Don't have to type in anything. All right, set up a UN user. This is bad, I'm gonna hit no. I just don't wanna deal with all the permissions. Open SSH, I will hit enter, that's good for me. And then allow root login. Yeah, sure, why not, yes. And then enter SSH key. I'll just hit enter for none. And here. Okay, so now it's going to ask you to delete a disk. And in this case, we're going to use the biggest one, which is disk SDA, Sierra Delta Alpha. So SDA. I'll hit enter. And then you want to use what? And then it says, what do you want to use? And like, again, this is all going to be explained in that wiki that they link. Or you can also type in question mark, and it'll tell you what they all do. For sys, I believe, oh, no, what did I do? I'm gonna delete, 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 delete. I'm just going to type in sys. Sys is the default one that it says for noobs to use, and that would be, that'd be me. Following will be erased. That is fine. I'll hit Y. I know, this is a lot of setup, but isn't it kind of cool? You're learning some Linux command line, or you're in no Linux command line, and you, um, you're you getting pretty bored by this video. But either way, I think we're all having a good time. All right, you're not having a good time if you're bored, but how could you be bored with this? You're, you're getting an Alpine Linux. There we go. Okay, so installation is complete. Please reboot. So we'll just type in reboot and the machine will be rebooted. It's gonna request a system reboot for us. And there we go. This should be pretty quick. Alpine is a real fast operating system to work with. There's a way of getting, there's a pretty simple way to get a desktop on here too, but I'd rather not do that because I want this to be as lean as possible. All right, we're started and loading up. And if you don't remember, if you don't remember your IP address, it's still up here. They, they, give, they give it to you again. So for TP login, I'm gonna type in root because I never changed the name and like a real bad security person, I did not create a regular user. I'll hit enter and then password. You know what the password is. Don't, don't you judge me for that password. I'm doing a YouTube tutorial video. I'm not actually using this. Oh no, it's incorrect. Root. All right, I'm in. It took me like nine guesses because I kept forgetting the password. So, ba -ba -ba. all right, first things first. We'll do the thing that you got to do on every system when you make a new one with uh, when a Linux server. We're going to update it. So if you're used to Ubuntu, you type in, you're probably going to type in apt, update, apt, upgrade. So here, this is a little bit different. We type in apk space update, and it'll update everything, and then apk space upgrade, and it will upgrade everything. If you want to know the difference, I'm the wrong person to ask. Now, if we were to go to, let's go to the RunTP's website, and they've got the script here, which I actually, I can't copy and paste into here. If you were savvy, you can use something like terminal. And you could come into terminal and SSH in. So you would just type in SSH, Never mind. I'm not going to do the terminal method. I'm just going to manually type this in. So I'm going to type in curl, and we'll see everything that's missing, because we need to figure out how to do this. So let's... I'm scooting this over, but you should have it on yours. So I'm going to type in curl minus l https colon slash slash setup dot run tp dot io and then whatever this big thing symbol is, bash. And we'll see that we're missing a couple things. So curl not found and bash not found. Those are programs, so we're going to download those. They're typically on a lot of typically on a lot of distros as they as the kids call it, but not on Alpine Linux. So we'll do apk add curl. Got it. And then apk add bash was the missing one. If you don't know what bash is, it's when you hit someone over the head with a mallet and it's hilarious. So we'll type in, okay, so we'll just type in the, the same command. 
A little trick, if you don't know this in Linux, when you're doing command line, you can just hit the up arrow and it'll go through the commands that you already wrote. So this way I don't have to type in everything again. So let's see here. It's gonna give us a couple more errors. So we need Docker. It will not do it automatically. So even though it says that it's installing Docker for Alpine, it's definitely not doing that. Easy way to do this. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go to the Alpine Linux site. I'm gonna click on Wiki, which you might already have open. And I'm just gonna type in Docker. It's got all the instructions here. So first, it says that Docker is in the community repository, see repositories for how to add the repository. So we need to add that. And if I scroll down, we're just gonna type in this command, setup apk repos minus cf. Let's go in here, apk, oh, I already forgot what it said. apk, no, setup, I totally butchered that one. Setup dash apk repos minus cf. And then it's gonna get all that. This will take a minute or two. All right, we got a repository set up. So that, that took a minute. And then the next step, all right, is to type in apk update, apk update. It's a little slow, a little slow on the response there. This should just take a second. But while it's doing that, I'm gonna go back to this repository page and hit the back button because I wanna do the rest of the Docker installation. So, oh, you can probably hear my dog eat in the background. Let's start here, apk add Docker. That will install Docker, apk add Docker. And this will also take a minute because Docker is a lot bigger than Alpine Linux. Actually, I don't know if that's true, but it's big-ish. I know this has taken a little bit of time, but imagine this. Imagine going through like four of my boring tutorial videos and then you're done. And then you get like, you go, you take the time to go through like four of my boring videos, but you got the work put in for like 20 of them combined since you can just one click install a lot of these containers. Think about it that way. I don't think that made any sense. All right, we're done. Installing. So next step is to add a username to Docker. So add group username Docker. So add group, and the username here is gonna be root and then docker. If you were more secure than me, maybe you made a user and has a different name, so you can add them to the docker group. Basically what we're doing is um, when docker is installed, it can only be accessed by people who are in the docker group, so we are adding the user root to the docker group. That's what we're doing there. To start the docker daemon at boot, see openrc. So this first command here, I believe, is going to tell Alpine Linux, whenever this machine is restarted, go ahead and start up Docker by default. We'll type in RC update Docker. Is that it? RC update, add Docker, add Docker default. Service Docker added to run levels default. That, that sounds like something. And then, right, so we have Docker installed. Now it will start when the machine, it'll automatically start up when the machine reboots, but now we need to start it up just for, just for our own sake right now. So service Docker start is that command. And Docker is now up and running. So let's see what happens if we try to install home server now. We should get an error that sudo is missing, which if you know, if you know your Linux, you know, you know sudo. So I'm going to hit enter. Let's see what it does. All right. So sudo command not found. So let's do apk add sudo and it will install the ability to run sudo commands. And now we should be able to install run tp. You're right there. You're, you're looking at the finish line here. Docker Compose plugin not installed. Oh no, okay, let's install Docker Compose plugin. That's also in the instructions. If I come in here, Docker Compose, apk add docker cli compose. So we'll just do that, apk add a docker, com docker cli compose. And that, that should be the last step. But maybe it's not because as you can tell, I don't know this stuff very well. Okay, so we're good there. We're gonna hit the up arrow, up arrow until we get to the curl. Run TP, please work. Oh, this is a good sign. Look at all these greens. It's gonna be pulling images. So this will also take a minute. I don't think it'll take as long as getting those repositories in here, but that should be the last step. And we will hopefully be able to access Run TP and start getting all these Docker containers going. I was wrong. This might take longer than the repositories thing to finish downloading. All right, we're stopping existing containers. We're starting new containers. This should be getting pretty close to the end. And we're good. Run TP started successfully. And you can see you can access it at the IP address of your virtual machine. Here's a cool trick if you don't know this. I don't think I've ever explained this. Port 80, if you type in HTTP and then a URL, by default, it's going to port 80. So you actually don't have to type in port 80, but you can. If you do HTTPS, by default, it's actually going to port 443. So let's try this out. Let's see if we got it to work. Let's type in 192.168.89, I think it was, 29er. Right? Yeah, it's, I'm doing it without the port number. It might still be installing some things in the background. So if it's not, 
popping up immediately, I would give it a minute. And make sure you're not using HTTPS like the other Docker stuff that I do. Oh, it's going. There we go. We got to register. So let's register with an email. I'll use my actual business email, volumedata21 at gmail.com. That is my real email. Volume data 21. No, it's not. Check this out. Volume data 21. It says, it's going to say no. It's going to say you cannot use that password. Oh, never mind. It will let me use it. None. Well, you know my password. I'm going to save and enter. The interface can be a little slow, but the Docker containers themselves should run pretty well. And we're in. Check it out. So it starts you off with a dashboard, and it's going to give you the amount of space that your virtual machine has. So it, it thinks your virtual machine is a real computer. CPU load, this is the amount of CPU that you've given the virtual machine. So I've only given it one core, so it's not using 100% of my CPU, but it's probably using a lot right now. And then the RAM, so I gave it two gigs, so it's using one gig. It's using 50% of that two gigs that I get it. But, but that's not why we're here. While we're here, you now have on your Synology NAS a whole Docker app store, which is loading up slowly. There we go. Look at this. There are a lot of apps here. I'm gonna say that there's 100. There could be less, there could be more. I'm not gonna count them, but I'm gonna say it's a solid even 100. So if you're in here, there's a couple that are kind of a pain in the butt to install. I haven't done videos on them yet because I don't know if I can easily do them. Um, and I wanna avoid doing a lot of videos where you would have to SSH into your NAS. So the nice thing about this being on a virtual machine too is anything you do in here will not mess with your Synology NAS. Um, I'll run through a couple of apps here that I think are really a really good idea to, to download and install this way. Actual budget is kind of a pain in the butt. AdGuard is also kind of a pain in the butt. Let me scroll down here. There's another one. The big one that you guys are probably looking for would be Pi, where is it? Pi Hole, Pi Hole, Pi Hole. I spoiled it before I even got to it. There's so many apps. Okay, Pi Hole, you're here. Pi Hole, right here. You can install it with one click, I think. Yeah, you just, I think you just leave this as 0, .0, .0, .0, .0. You just make a password, click install, Pi Hole will download. That's an awesome one. Invoice Ninja is another big one. This is one that I've wanted to do for a bit. I might do it. I think that's somebody else. Already. I'm, I'm sure there are already tutorials on how to get this on a NAS, but having a one-click install is really nice. Check this out. If I hit install, it requires an application key. So if I exit out of here, it's got more instructions and it wants me to type in this command. So I can actually, oh, I can't copy and paste, can I? But if I'm going to put this command over here, so I'm going to go back to my command line interface, and I can type that, I'll type in that whole command. So it's docker run show. Okay. <clears throat> and it's actually going to run that command that, that we needed in there. So th this makes it really easy to do that kind of stuff. And I know if I had comments turned on, I can't imagine how many of you guys would be calling me an idiot for copying and pasting all this when there's probably a clear way of using copy and paste instead of writing everything down manually like I'm doing. So... There you go. If you want to install Invoice Ninja, I can get you through that first little step there. And then, yeah, you would just put that in the application key, whatever it spits out. I'm going to hit the back button here. But yeah, so there you go. Oh, look at this. Image is on here. How big of a pain in the butt can image be to install and update? So I think this program also lets you update. So once you have it installed, I think install turns into a, an update button if an update is ever available. But there you go. You can mess with some settings on here. I'm not going to do a full run through of TP because there's a lot of documentation on it on their website. But I will say there are two apps, at the very least there's two apps, that you might want to be a little cautious about and a couple of other ones that um, might give you some trouble. The first is Plex and Jellyfin. Just remember, since this is on a virtual machine, your virtual machine actually can't use the GPU from the Synology NAS. So this isn't a big deal if you're using a Ryzen Synology NAS because you don't get you won't get hardware transcoding anyways, but a big reason that a lot of people have the Intel ones are so they can do transcoding. So you're going to lose that ability in here, but you know, you, you could still use it or if, if you have a lot of compressed videos or you're just streaming music, that stuff will still work in here. And the other thing is I've had some trouble trying to use some of these AI apps. Like I think there's some sort of chat GPT type apps in here and I've not had a lot of luck with those. Oh, Homebox is a great program, by the way, if you're not using that. Grab yourself some home box. I don't know if I've done a tutorial on that, but I will. So, yeah. And then the other thing, too, since you're running it on a virtual machine, it's only using your virtual machine resources. And it does kind of suck that you have to divvy out your resources like that. Whereas if you just run these on Docker containers straight from your Synology NAS using Container Manager, it's a lot easier to manage how much power things are using. And you don't have to give up the same sort of resources, you know, when it's not doing anything. So you give up that two gigabytes of RAM, whether your virtual machine is using it or not. So something to bear in mind. But here you go. You've got a you've got an app store to play around with. You've got a lot of apps you can try out. And they're very, very easy to install, which is awesome.
So yeah, one day I'll try and do a Casa OS one too, but I couldn't install Casa OS using Alpine Linux. So in the future, I'll probably do one where I'm actually gonna make an Ubuntu virtual machine and we'll do Casa OS that way. So hopefully you're able to get this to work and good luck to you.